Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast. This week's episode is titled, How Suggesting Ways for People to Improve Can Backfire on You. Now, one of the things I've noticed is that if you're in a leadership position for very long, you will eventually, and maybe sooner rather than later, be in a situation to help another person improve something about what they do, their approach to work, the results they're getting, maybe even their thinking about a problem, how they're solving a problem. The, the list of the things you could be involved in the conversation about is actually quite long. And this applies whether you're a supervisor working with your team or a parent working with your child or a sibling working with your brother or sister a coworker working with one of your fellow teammates, talking with a peer of any kind in business, talking with someone at church or at home, helping your aging parents, trying to help your spouse. The, the list is quite long of the number of situations where an offer for improvement or a suggestion for improvement could be made with the best of intentions. And I want to share a phrase that I heard recently. I was listening to the Hidden Brain podcast, which if you're interested in how we connect with people, how our brain works, how we perceive situations, and you want to continue learning in, in that arena of uh, human behavior and thought, I'd suggest that podcast. There was an episode recently titled, Why Conversations Go Wrong, and the guest on that episode was linguist Deborah Tannen, who has studied communication strategies in many cultures and many places around the world. And so she's written about a number of patterns of communication. So that's probably a person you want to check out also, Deborah Tannen. One of the things she said is a suggestion for improvement implies criticism. And somehow that phrase really resonated with me. And so I'll say it again, a suggestion for improvement implies criticism. And if you think about it, any time you suggest a person improve anything in their life, you are implying that whatever they're doing right now isn't as good as it could be, which implies criticism. And even if you're intending to help that person, I'm going to start with the presumption that you're offering suggestion for improvement because you do care about the person, you care about the results, that you care about the outcomes, those kinds of things that you legitimately do care, and you hope that at the end of this conversation, your relationship with this person will still be solid and stable. So even when you intend the suggestion or the offer in a positive way, it can be heard as criticism and can trigger a negative response. You may have actually experienced this. So it's something I'm going to suggest you be very careful with. And as I was reflecting on this and thinking about preparing for this podcast episode, I was reminded of David Rock's work where he references something he calls the SCARF model. The SCARF model references five big domains of how our brain works and how these parts of our perception affect social interactions. And the S in the SCARF model is status. And status is defined in the SCARF model as relative importance to others or our position relative to other people. So it's our positional connection to or relative position to another person. And basically what this says is anything we do that causes the other person to perceive that we're elevating ourselves relative to them can trigger negatively the status domain of their brain. Now, not everybody has exactly the same perception of things and will interpret everything exactly the same. It is important to recognize that status is something that all of us perceive, some of us to a greater degree than others. Well, here's the point. If you say something that triggers a thought for the other person that you are positioning yourself higher than them in some kind of knowledge or awareness or approach, it will trigger their status domain of their brain. It will be perceived by their brain as a threat, and it will likely trigger them negatively. 
So what's the big point? We'll get back to what Deborah Tannen said. A suggestion for improvement implies criticism. It triggers a status threat for the other person. And depending on your relationship with the person, your history with the person, the context in which you have the conversation, a whole bunch of other things, it could go really badly, even when you're trying to help. So what's the point? Beware of suggestions for improvement, especially any suggestion that was unsolicited. Now, how could we do this better? We do want to help our teammates improve. We want to help the people that report to us get better. We want to help our peers improve. We want to help our spouses improve. We want to help our children improve. We want to help our parents if we've learned something that would help them. Often we legitimately do want to help the other person and we're offering information or suggestions with the intent to help them get better results, feel better, have better outcomes, make life easier, whatever the case may be. And we want to do it in a way that it's received and acted on rather than turning into an argument. Now, the situations I'm talking about are are non-emergency situations. Clearly, if a child is about to touch a hot stove, then you leap to action and you make a suggestion not to touch it. Or if you see someone's about to do something that creates an imminent threat of some kind to them, either in relationships or physical threat or job security or something like that, well, then you probably need to speak up. And if they get offended, then that's just sort of the side consequence of the situation and you'll navigate through it. So I'm not talking about those emergency situations where it has to be done right now. I'm talking about non-emergency situations, which, by the way, I think are the vast majority of situations where we offer suggestions for improvement of people. It's rarely in a situation where it has to happen right this minute. So maybe there's some time to navigate this successfully, to be careful how we engage. And even before I offer the two suggestions for how to do it better, I'm going to say that the specifics of the situation can change how you do what I'm going to suggest so many ways I can't even begin to talk about them. The specifics can change the approach a lot depending on the other person's preferred communication style. You know, I talk about the DISC model a lot. How a person with D traits hears what I'm going to say is different from how a person with S traits will hear them. So their communication style and the difference between their style and yours is an important factor to consider in terms of how you position the phrase or how long you take to warm up the communication, or how directly or indirectly you approach it. So there's adjustment there that's implied. I'm not going to get into all those details today. It also depends on your history, uh, the relationship you have with them. So what I'm going to say is not a uh, one-size-fits-all approach. They're more just like some conceptual ideas that I'm going to encourage you to think about as you find yourself in a situation to help other people improve. And there's a warning here. This approach or these two suggestions will take more time and effort than just telling people what you think. It will take more time and effort to do this and to do this skillfully. I suggest that taking that time is a good investment of time. It's an investment of time, not an expenditure of time, meaning you'll get returns back in the health and quality of your relationship with the other person. Okay, so how can you do it better? Two quick ideas for how to offer improvement suggestions in a safer way. Well, the first one is don't offer. And the best way to do that is to engage the other person in a conversation through questions, encouragement, observations when they are asked for to help the other person find the path forward rather than to offer your own suggestion for improvement. So I'd say the best strategy, the one that's least likely to offend the other person, is to come alongside them and engage in a conversation with them where they come to the conclusion on their own and find their own path forward with maybe some minor suggestions along the way rather than directly telling the person how they can improve. So that's the best way. The second best way is to get permission before you offer. And even this can be very delicate, so I'm not suggesting you do this every time. And just because of time limitations, I'm not going to beat this strategy up a lot. So the general concept is get perception, get permission, excuse me, get permission first. And it might sound something like this, probably a little more direct in the context of this podcast than I would actually do in a conversation. Just to get the point across, it would sound something like this. Hey, if I saw something that might help you get better results in X area, would you want me to tell you about that? And 
by the way, even the way I phrase that is probably a little more direct than you want to do it. That's more the concept, not the words. And even when they say, yes, I want to hear it, I'd probably follow up with, I really don't want to be offensive. Are you sure you want to hear what I think kind of thing? So I would probably ask effectively twice. And again, depends on the person, depends on the context of the situation, depends on your history with them, depends on the trust level with them, whether you can even do what I just said and not immediately trigger a negative response. So how do you do it better? Best, don't do it at all. Help them find the path forward. Engage in a collaborative problem-solving conversation with them so that they find the way to do things better rather than you tell them the way to do things better. And if you really have to tell them, try to get permission first and beware that getting permission first might just trigger the negative response that offering the suggestion would have in the first place. The idea for this week is to remember that suggesting ways for people to improve can backfire on you. And if you want to do it better, beware of that tendency. Beware of negatively triggering the other person. If you'll practice coming alongside people and helping them solve problems where they find the solution to their problem rather than you telling them how to solve the problem, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.